We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Sunday, and I just have to clean a couple things up. We have a guest on the show. Will is here. We'll talk to him in a moment. Uh, first of all, I did a show yesterday with Ed. Now, the audio version came up on Spotify, but the video version did not go out on YouTube. There was some technical glitch or something like that. And, and let's be honest, I fucked up. I fucked up. I did the wrong thing and it didn't work. So we missed the video um, yesterday. And uh, the other thing is you see my background here. Uh, that is not where I'm at. Uh, my We're going back down to Savannah uh, today and there's a bunch of stuff going on behind me. So I thought I'd put a virtual background up just so uh, uh, we don't have to see the movement and all that stuff going in the background. So that's where we're at today. This one will be on YouTube, so don't worry about it. Uh, but we have Will with us today. And, and once again, Will is fired up as he is known to be. Welcome. W welcome, Will. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Um, good, good luck to your son in Savannah. Hope it goes well for him. And He'll so, be well. Yeah. It'll be cool. Um, yeah, it's just been an it has been. I think I said this um, um, in my last video, just few, uh, about an hour, an hour and a half ago. This week has been crazy. The last week has been crazy. The next twenty one days is just going to be fucking insane. Let Let's be honest. It yeah. is crazyville out there right now. I've said that um, you know going into this is they if they see more and more that they don't have a chance these are narcissists or idiots in a corner and they're going to do anything and everything. And that's pretty much what we're seeing. The important thing is Democrats don't get caught up in the rhetoric and start believing shit that Republicans say they tend to do that. And it pisses me off because they've been lying to you for decades. Why do you believe them now? I don't know. It's, I mean, the problem is, is the, the mass media, I, I, I did a, a video on this and then it, it never got out so i may have to redo it but i kept wondering what the hell is wrong with the mass media you could see trump you could see him this is not even a question you could see what's happening you could see him deteriorating right in front of him. it's like the end of raiders of the lost ark he's melting in front of us why you guys keep saying washing him well what's your problem i i the the, the answer to that is pretty clear uh, we don't have journalists anymore. We don't no. have news outlets. It's all entertainment. And they're doing what a bookie would do, or they're doing what a fight promoter would do. They're trying to keep it close so people stay engaged and still pay attention to it. And there'll be a big crowd watching on November 5th. This is all about money. It has nothing to do with truth, because whatever happened to Donald Trump, he's falling apart. He's imploding. Okay. And that's just the fucking way it is, regardless of what the, the media says. But part of it, too, is like... um. Kamala Harris in the last week or so has gone on a freaking media blitz. Yeah, I mean, call me daddy, uh, the Donald uh, Howard Stern view show, great interview, the view, sixty, 60 minutes. minutes, which was the given. And my point is that she has young people in her young relative to yeah. our generation, um, who who see this like, and the mass media. The one thing that freaked the mass media out. And especially Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, please retire. Oh, God damn it. Retire, please. please. If you, if please you, retire. if Joe Biden has to retire, she needs to retire. She's, She's retire. lost. I it. mean, Joe Biden has never fell asleep during an interview, but that's being said. But she was going off that. Why is she doing all these podcasts and these other things at Howard Stern? She could go to the real media. Let me tell you why. It's simple. And then I'm going to tell you why they freak out. The Call Me Daddy podcast, 10 million subscribers. Women, 35 and under. Yep. Howard Stern has his own goddamn channel 24 hours a day on Sirius. Okay, that's all you got to say there. 60 Minutes is its own icon. It's going to be the same. Right. The point is, he, her younger people know where to send her and how to deal with it. Um, and the problem with the mass media goes back to the DNC. When they went ahead and brought all the um, creators on there and kind of cut the mass media out because they know where people's eyes are going. And the mass media is really jealous. They don't get it. They well, never get it. Millennials and Gen Zs don't watch network television. No. They don't watch sitcoms. They don't watch the news. They watch what's on the Internet, what's on YouTube, what's uh, on TikTok or whatever. And, and you know, I'm just going to say this. 
at the end of uh, this election, the Republican Party will be burnt down. It will come to an end, and when it comes back, it'll be in a different form somehow, some way, and it'll take a long time to rebuild itself. But I'm going to tell you this. After this election, the media, the mainstream media, left and right, might be burning themselves down, too, because as I've said before, we know how this is going to go. She's going to win decisively. And when she wins decisively, somebody needs to ask the the, the, the media people, how is it for the last year you had no idea that Kamala was going to win this big? How is it that Will or Mike or Under the Desk News or all these other people knew about this, but you didn't? People can't trust the media anymore. That's why they're turning to the Internet and they're getting better, more accurate information. Because we're not in this about the money. We're in this about the truth. Yeah. And also, it's just. I mean, I watched a lot of these interviews and she's like. I mean, and then Trump went on some kind of podcast and they laughed in his face. Yeah, they laughed in his face because he said he was basically a truth teller. And, and I think the guy was going to fall off his chair. Andrew Schultz, yeah, Andrew yeah. Schultz was the uh, interviewer. And, and so, the, but they keep propping this sane wash bullshit up, and people aren't buying it. And here's the thing, um, and then the criticism about Kamala Harris. Well, they still haven't given me this. They still haven't given me that. Look, you're not going to vote for her. Shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear you guys, this, you non-fucking undecided voters. You, you're liars. Yeah. You're going to decide. But she was on, she went to Univision. She went, which is basically enemy, enemy territory. We know right. who's running Univision. And she took the, the she took the, um, the questions there in the open. Now, I love Fox News saying, well, she was using a teleprompter. No, sir, the... Um, Monterey is using a teleprompter so he can translate for her the questions. Right. I mean, it's just what, you know, again, stupidity on display. But I, I watched some of it, some of it, but the one thing was the touchy moment with the woman who lost her mom, who never became a citizen because she couldn't get the health care she needed. Right. And it was like, see, that's what a president should be. That's what we want. Right. We don't want this insanity that's gone even further. I mean, he was in Aurora, Colorado, and he came up with the Aurora plan to get rid of migrants based on the 1798 uh, law that FDR used to imprison Japanese citizens in internment camps. I will say this. I made this prediction. Maybe I did it with Ed. Um, Why is he going to Colorado? It's a blue state. Why would he go to Colorado? And I predicted that he would say because he was going to go there and reiterate the bullshit conspiracy theorists, uh, theories of of, uh, Venezuelan Mm -hmm. gang members taking over apartments. Now, we know that wasn't true. That didn't happen. But I know he thought that would be a trigger point for Colorado. And he went there. And that's exactly what he did. He he said he, he wanted to bring that up because it. He wants to scare the rest of the country. He doesn't care if he burns down the people he's talking in front of, much like Detroit. Detroit's a shithole. Every place is going to be like Detroit in Detroit in front of Detroiters. Fucking stupid. Yeah, they they came back on him hard. Um, You saw that the ad that Kamala Harris released. It was rapid response. And Detroit is an example of a city that rebuilt itself. Yeah, it's come along nicely. Yeah, and they've done a great job. I mean, but his thing, I mean, everything he says is a lie because he's in Detroit talking about the auto industry. The auto industry is failing. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to open all these plants. You never did shit anyway. I'm going to put tariffs on everything. And what did I do? And I again, I did a video on it. All I did was open Google and said, auto industry in the last four years. It's been up. It's still going up, even yeah. though it's a little bit of a slowdown, but that's normal when you come back from a big uh, lump. But they're still going to be up 1.3% this year. Wages are up. Profits up to 7.5%. How did I find this? Simple re- You and I know to try to find something in the old days was something called microfiche. Yeah. You had to go through old newspapers. You had to go through books. That information was not readily available. Right. That information is, I just literally, five minutes, and I could put together 
a, um, a, a, a nine minute video on it because I'm the one thing that most you, me, the majority of the smart creators out there are. We are curious. Right. Exactly. We want to know what's going on. And when we hear bullshit, we want to show this is bullshit. And we've been through the biggest mound of bullshit in two weeks that is costing people's lives. Absolutely. I have, I have never. I'm going to back up a second because I brought this up in another video. Republicans presidents have never been good in crisis. And I'm going to go back to something I remember decades ago. Hurricane Andrew. Hurricane Andrew came across the southern part of Florida and flattened Homestead. I remember the pictures. Flattened that, the whole city. And they're struggling to get help. And the uh, I don't know who it was. She must have been a director of emergency services or something. She was doing it. They were pressed. She was doing a, a, a press, not a presser, but like a, a news thing with a news reporter. And she goes, she's in literally tears. She's going, we need help. Someone call the president. We need help. Now, I believe the president was George H. at the time. I think so. Yeah. And so there was no help. There was no FEMA. She had it literally, she had to shame them to bring help to Homestead. So what I'm saying is what you're hearing from Republicans and like Mike Johnson, it's nothing fucking new. Katrina response. You remember who was in charge of FEMA? That bald headed asshole who yeah. shouldn't have been there. He was only there because he did a solid for George W. You saw what happened in Katrina. That's a Republican response. So now, and then when Trump was in, in power, saw what he did to Puerto Rico. And you even said it. I saw your video. He blocked Puerto Rican aid. Yeah. He didn't want to give it to you because literally he does not consider that part of America. Well, he blocked um, California fire aid too. And he promised to do it again in Coachella today. Oh my God. It was ridiculous. Really? He yeah. He was up on the stage and he was doing his whatever. And he said that we're going to, um, we're going to make sure that um, Gavin Newsom does what we want. If not, we're going to hold that fire aid. It's real easy. I've done it before. Motherfucker. And it, the thing about it is that those people around him, I've been in, I lived in Southern California when you have those fires. Right. It's horrible. The smoke sits in the valleys. It's dangerous. The ash flows. People die. But, you know, and oh, no, he was talking about water. He has no idea how water works in California. I do. It's about the rain. It's about Northern California and the aqueducts. And he's talking about in Beverly Hills, they only have, oh, God, him and his fucking showers. He only, they only have like 28 gallons a person. They only do a shower seven minutes. Well, we're going to fix that and make sure Gavin Newsom gives them all the water. Dude, first of all, they're not rationing water in L.A. anymore because they had a couple of good rainstorms, a couple of uh, solids. And two, when they did that, it's because, like, the reservoirs were empty. You, he has no concept of way things work. And that's why when you had Hurricane Matthew that devastated North Carolina's Outer Banks, see, people don't read. When they say that, um, when Kamala Harris says, we're going to give you 100% of money, they mean all this money that the state's going to spend in their infrastructure, the federal government is going to um, replace it. So the state budget isn't isn't harmed. Right. So if it takes you that much money to fix this, the federal government's going to back it up so you don't. it doesn't come out of your budget. It's a humanitarian thing. Trump, and, and so... Um, North Carolina asked for their 100%. He gave them 1%. Yeah. Devastated their budget. And and that's the thing. And then they're so stupid. Ron DeSantis was told, a reporter said, hey, what's your response to the uh, Wall Street Journal saying that Milton is going to cost about $50 billion of damage? And his quote is, what does the Wall Street Journal know about, uh, know how to do an analysis on weather? I mean, this is what you elected. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, we, we response is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, old soul sent me a story and I talked about it with Ed a little bit. And this is just really tragic. You mentioned how what Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and all the Republicans are doing by uh, gaslighting people and thinking that uh, uh, 
Joe Biden isn't doing anything for the hurricane people. There was a guy in an interview and he was clearly upset. And he was upset by the fact that his father-in-law, who lives in North Carolina, who was lived in an area that was ravaged by Hurricane Helene, is struggling. He doesn't have food. He doesn't have water. He can't do anything. And he refuses to take anything from FEMA because he believes Donald Trump when Donald Trump says, if you take money from FEMA, they'll take your house, which is not true. It's categorically not true. So this elderly man is living in shambles, living in a toxic situation potentially, and refuses to take the help that's readily available because Donald Trump told him not to. A guy like that can die. And that's just more blood on Donald Trump's hands. And the thing about it, I, yeah, I heard the call. And I actually played it for my wife. And she heard it and she goes, and, and her, to paraphrase, she said, fuck them. Because her point was, you can't bring a horse to go to water. Because it's not worth your, it's not worth your heart and time. And mm -hmm. I understand what she was saying. She's not, my wife's not cold. But her point is, I can't make you do something. If I can't make you do something, it's not worth my my pain for you. You got to fix it. I, I agree. And that that was my first response to it. Well, if you want to be a dumbass, fuck you. You were just culling the herd. And that is a cold attitude. But then I got to think about his daughter across the country struggling with this. They know better. They're trying to help. They're going to be hurt as well in this whole process. So it, it's a hard one to just say, fuck it, just go ahead and die. Uh, well, you they, know, if, he if said it was it just, later, later in the phone call, he said, we just cut loose. We cut them loose. We don't like it. It's well, tearing yeah. our family apart, but we can't. I mean, we can only do so much because our, our limited, and that's, it's hard. And then it's like for a lot of people across this country, did you see that Lincoln Project ad they did no. about the daughter? Oh, you got to find this. And a lot of people have seen it. So it's a Lincoln Project uh, ad with a girl talking about her dad and showing, you know, the little good girl things. Dad, you know, growing up, being with me all the time. Um, and then you discovered him. And then you believed him. She's talking about Trump. And it shows her getting pregnant. So she's going to hospital. And she goes, and now I couldn't get my help. And now I'm, uh, and she's basically saying, you chose me, you chose him over me, even though, and now it's going to cost me my life. And I watched that video and it's like, wow. But the part of me that said, that's really sad. But you know what the part of me, other part of me said? That man probably went to a Trump rally and basically Pray to Trump to bring his daughters back to life. Yeah, tell me I'm wrong. Well, you know, I'm a, not. A lot of people, when 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 Tim Walls came in to uh, be the nominee for the vice presidential uh, situation, uh, a lot I heard some, one woman say something that I thought was very compelling and very poignant. She said the reason people like Tim Walls so much, especially younger people, because he represents the dad that they once had that they've now lost to the Trump cult. You know, they had dads that were like Tim Walls, but then when they got sucked into this Tim, uh, this uh, Trump cult, they lost them. They've lost their dads as if they died or if they just took off. And that's a pretty sad commentary on this yeah. country. If dads ultimately abandon their kids, there's no fucking excuse for that. And you've got to look at it. Cause I was thinking about, I mean, we've been seeing on the polls there, especially the, the New York times. I'd said there's no new October surprises, but the New York times keeps trying to bring one yeah, up. Yeah. And the latest poll this morning, I mean, I'm going to, I don't subscribe to the paper, but I get the newsletter, you know, cause I can find the information for free. I'm not going to right. give them money. No. Um, and, but it's saying that Donald Trump's ahead six points in Arizona. I'm going, Bullshit. what the fuck? And, 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 you know, and I kind of found it and they kind of give all the case. They say he's doing better in the economy, border, whatever. And I kept thinking, what the, if it's true, what's going on with these people? And it kind of, you've been in, um, if you're an industry or you're uh, manufacturing, there's something called fishbone. Mm -hmm. And fishbone is where you take a problem and then you go, here's the fish. That's the problem. And then you pick out the bones and see what happened here, what happened here. You're looking for the root cause of the problem. Right. And I kept thinking, okay, 
let's take the New York Times point as as fact. This this for now. That's your problem. That's your fish. Let's look at the bones. Why would they do that? I mean, okay, so you have a lot of brown people in there. Okay, that makes sense. You have a lot of people from outside the country for who are not from Arizona. That makes sense. It's kind of like like Florida. Um, you have a big um, Indian population with the big res that could affect it. Right. And I kept thinking, what is? I mean, what's driving it? And it just hit me. It's really simple. The majority of MAGA folk, and probably Republicans too, who refuse to vote for Kamala Harris, is that it's really simple. Donald Trump's promises to get rid of the brown people. Hi, that's me. He promises to get rid of them. That's why he got the immigration thing, the his so-called Aurora plan, um, the border thing. That's why he's denigrating immigrants. That's the only, that's what they need because the rest of it means nothing. And I kept thinking, what's the next steps for this guy? I mean, do you, his big plan, like Kamala Harris, we're going to build more homes. I know she'll come up with a plan that's logical. I mean, but it makes sense because you get supply and demand, push out the corporate people and that'll make it easier. But the thing that, that Trump said, well, we'll build homes. We're going to build them on federal land, like BLM land. What, in the middle of what, fucking Colorado? In the middle of Montana? What are you right. talking about? And and it just, it, and I kept thinking, just take it from a logical concern with this madman. He will do what the movie um, It's a Wonderful Life did at the end, where they created a part of it. He'll create Trump bills. He'll right. do it. And he will do it anywhere. And I'm thinking in Arizona... I am not beyond belief to think that he would push everyone off the big res and then build homes on there. Let me, let me insane enough to let do me this ask, crazy let, shit. Let me ask you something about Arizona. And, you mm -hmm. know, I try to break things down so it makes sense to me. Uh, Joe Biden won, uh, beat Donald Trump by, what, 10,000 votes in, in Arizona, something like that? It was less than Georgia, yeah. Yeah, it was, say, 10,000 votes, okay? Now, would you, would you agree that Kamala Harris is a more popular candidate than Joe Biden? I believe he's a more popular candidate, and I also believe there's a a, a reproductive rights uh, yeah. referendum on the ballot. Right, there's reproductive rights on the uh, ballot. And if Donald Trump lost Arizona, what is it that he's done since 2020 to improve his lot in Arizona? Nothing. He, all he's done is lost support. So the idea that he's up by 6%, we go back to the polls again. The polls are bullshit. They've been wrong, notoriously wrong every fucking time. I don't know why the media goes to them as if they're the gospel. They never have been the gospel. They're not the gospel. And then the people hear it on their TV channels they listen to, and they go, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Stop listening to that bullshit because it's I always mean, wrong. Why would you use other, that as a source? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put your other the other thing. Carrie Late is getting her ass kicked by yeah, Ruben Gallegos. Absolutely. I mean, that's not even going to be close. I saw some of that debate. That woman, no, no. She can't. She's horrible. She's horrible. And the thing about it is like, that's got to be a factor. You cannot tell me, because the newest thing for the mass media is that, yeah, like the cynic races or the down races are getting, are getting Democratic support, but Kamala Harris isn't. How's that? That doesn't. That don't jive. Well, that doesn't jive with me. It doesn't he, make sense. And here's the other thing that you have to consider, too, is every time Donald Trump has endorsed somebody and they're crazy MAGA fucks, they lose because the Democrats want to run against the crazier, the better. Carrie Lake's crazy. Rick Scott got a lot of problems. Scott Perry in Pennsylvania. These are all crazy MAGA fucks. But uh, historically, in the last you know, for two to four years, those people have lost because they're too crazy. They're too MAGA. And that's why I'm not so worried about the Senate anymore, because just because Scott Perry and Rick Scott are incumbents doesn't mean shit anymore because of abortion, because of just the craziness of the whole MAGA movement. And that's one thing that we do see. I do see when I do these look into the dive in these polls, they never talk 
about women and women's rights for abortion. They ignore these as factors. They have totally ignored these factors. They do that in Missouri. They do that in Florida. And Florida has two referendums. You got the weed yep. and you have reproductive rights. Those two in there. I just don't. And, and so when you see these polls and I go in, and see the problem with the New York Times, they have been. I don't trust the New York the Times. Poll. Yeah, I, I don't anymore. The Siena poll has been lifted up as some kind of gold standard. But for me, for all the polls that, again, starting in August when Kamala Harris got into the race, everything, all the Siena poll has always been the outlier. The one that's saying Harris is doing shitty while the other ones are trending up. So I don't know what they're doing in New York on the Times. I mean, they endorsed her, but then they still go after her. It's just, and then the Washington Post is just as crazy. Um, I don't know their agenda. It's not going to win. I don't no. think it's clicks. It can't be clicks. No, it people, makes no sense. People come. I, I got a DM yesterday, and somebody said, "I heard on, I heard on the news that uh, the whole abortion thing isn't going to be a factor." Are you Are you fucking high? Are you fuck? They told you it wouldn't be a factor in 2022. What the fuck happened? They got their ass beat. This the the Roe v. Wade, the abortion issue, given that it's affecting 50% of this population, meaning women, and, and 75% total with men supporting women. It is the single most important, devastating factor. I will say this. Well, it, it, in my lifetime, any, I was going to say in history, but there has never been an important, more important question in a presidential uh, race than that abortion issue in my lifetime, and I'm 64. And, and, and here's the thing. Um, let's look at it also. It's not just the, and I hate using the word abortion, the reproductive rights factor, right. because that's what it is. Yeah, It's your rights for your own medical reproduction. I mean, if men had to have that problem, this wouldn't be, had to, if they had the restriction that this wouldn't even be an issue. But that being said, right, it's not just that. It's the absolute war on women absolutely. overall by these guys. They are absolutely... Nothing is off limits. Nothing to say. Basically, pushing women back to beyond the 1850s. That's their idea. There was some motherfucker that came on, 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 uh, did a video on TikTok, and you did this full toast talking about how women should dress for bed with a nightgown. And yeah. I'm looking at him going, and, and all the other women are going, what the? F I mean, and he said this. And I'm talking, you, 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 you never dated. You, you know I mean, and, and that's the thing. There's, there was a Washington Post article uh, today, this Saturday evening that I popped on and said, Trump allies are worried about alpha male, uh, males ruining um, his support amongst women. You think? Because the, you just there, figured I, that out. Uh, just yeah. Now? And the thing about it is that that, is such bullshit is ridiculous. Yeah. That is not a man. You know what I call those guys when I've met them all my years? Fucking jerks. Yeah. They're, they are worth And What it is is that, you know, if you have to talk your game, you have no game. It's simple as that. There's a language of men. And within the language of men from you and I growing up, we always knew who was okay, who always knew was a total asshole. Oh, yeah, we all we it, they just said, and what it is is like the Fox News thing have basically basically said being a total asshole makes you a great man. No, and women know this, and it goes back to that old thing that that thing that came up this year, the man or the bear. Yeah, people will take the bear. I would take the bear because I know the bear is safer, and and I don't care because. They, they've ruined they've ruined the idea of masculinity. And you know who's an alpha male? Tim Walsh. Tim yeah. Walsh is a fucking alpha male. And I don't people, give a shit. And people, you know, the, the whole idea of an alpha male is, is so one-dimensional. I mean, there are certain times when you have to be tough. There's certain times you have to be sensitive. And mm -hmm. if you're going to depict somebody as an alpha male, you have a picture in your mind of this tough guy. Now, I 
I don't I don't like to classify myself as anything because I don't like to join any group regardless. Mm -hmm. But these people that have to keep telling you I'm an alpha male, they're definitely not an alpha male. They're no. insecure little punk ass bitches is what they are. Bingo. And their insecurity comes up as as violent, it manifests as violence and misogyny and, and de desperate for control. Gee, how's that? Who's that sound like? Yeah, the man running for president on the Republican side. We could do, you and I, as our age, we could do a fucking hour and a half just on what it is to be a man. Because we don't know. We've been taught one way. We were shown uh, certain things by our parents and our fathers. And there, but, you know, and you have to, you come in with some kind of conglomeration to who you should, what you should be as a man. And it's not what they present no i know that ain't it well put it this sure. put it this way what it is to be a man who knows it's different for everybody because people are different the problem is these people that claim to be alpha males they don't know what to do either so they just like you say play this fucking role because that's all they're really doing is cosplaying what they perceive as being an alpha male. This whole alpha male bullshit. I, you know, no. I don't. I, 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 and, I, I laugh at people when they tell me that. But, no, you're not. No, you're not. and 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 it just kind of, it just plays on that because women right now are in fear. Let's be honest. I don't blame I mean, them. I mean, I'm in fear for them. Yeah, and I mean, look at JD Vance. I mean, you saw his last interview. You brought it up. I saw your last video about him being asked again. I saw that. And he and he went the same thing to Tim Waltz. And then he went mansplaining because that well, was a woman interviewer. I well, saw that. I'm going, dude, you. Uh, I wish you would reach across the table and just slap you across the face. You, you and I know what, what we're talking about here, but let's tell the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, um, Tim Waltz asked J.D. Vance, did Donald Trump lose in 2020? And J.D. Vance could not answer it, would not answer it. Uh, and he did it very specifically because he's terrified of Donald Trump. Here's a guy that claims to be an alpha male, ult ultra masculine, but he's a pussy ass bitch. So then he goes on an interview with the New York Times and they ask him five times. Now, I will give the New York Times credit for this. This is what should have been done in the first place. I ask you a question. If you don't answer, I ask you again. If you don't answer, I ask you again. And I keep asking you until you answer the question. He was asked five times, and all five times he could not, would not answer it. He, he didn't say, you know, he could have said, yes, he lost. That would have been the truth. But if he had any courage, he would say, no, he didn't lose, and here's why. But he couldn't go either way. He couldn't make a decision. This is not a masculine guy. This is not a confident guy. This is a flat-out fucking coward because he's afraid of Donald Trump. And, and then, like, it's – there was – someone told me something first years ago. Um, and, oh, someone who does um, investigations for police. Mm -hmm. They were talking about that um, that Penn State coach um, who was convicted of molesting oh, yeah. players. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. all right. And so they watched the interview, his first interview, and they asked him a question, and then he repeated the question and answered the question with a question. And he then the investigator was looking at him and he goes, "Oh, that man's lying." And yeah. they go, they asked him why, because whenever a suspect. Asks, uh, asks a question of the question and answers with the question, they're avoiding the truth. Well, and exactly. you heard, and, and what it did, what did uh, J.D. Vance did at all finds? He kept bringing up this tech con censorship bullshit, saying, well, is that okay? Is that, and the third time she asked him, he goes, why well, just answer your question with a question? Motherfucker, that's not how you answer a question. She said, Senator, yes or no? Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? He brought up the same thing, you know. And I'm like, dude, I mean, if you were if you were being interrogated for a crime, you better you better get your lawyer in there because you're fucked. Well, and the thing is, I don't understand how a lawyer doesn't realize this looks bad for me. You're supposed to be able to talk for a, a, a living. 
you say no, you don't answer it five times. You don't realize this makes you look bad. He must realize it makes him look bad. That shows how cowardly he is. He's willing to make himself look bad, make himself out to be a little bitch just to appease dumbass Donald Trump. Well, part of it, too, is that he goes and afterwards, he goes, yeah, I showed her. <laughs> I, I mean, you tell me, you know, exactly that's where they go. They go, yeah, well, she's just a woman. I showed her. Yeah. I mean, the the dismissal, and that's comes back to what one of the things that is a legitimate concern about Kamala Harris, and it goes back to something I remember from being a kid in California, or yeah, I was a kid when this happened. Um, Tom Bradley running for governor, first black mayor of Los Angeles, was running for governor against George Dugmajian. Poll said that he was going to win the governorship, and he lost. And they did a postmortem, and they found out a lot of the voters said, yeah, I didn't want Dugmajian, but I couldn't vote for a black man as governor. Right. My biggest concern, <clears throat> and it's, it's still a concern, is that a lot of these people are going to go, I just can't do it. I'd well, rather you, take the mediocre, psychotic white man than bring myself to vote for a woman, a woman especially a black woman. When That's you say, a concern. When you say mediocre, psychotic white man, you're talking about Trump? Who else? Well, Who else here, would that be? That's a good question. Um, I think there's more to this story than Donald Trump getting elected. Donald Trump, you have to understand, he's 78 years old. He's not in the best health. No one expects him to make it through uh, a four-year term. In fact, some people even think that the tech bros and J.D. Vance may push his ass out early. So if you're voting for a Republican just because you don't like Kamala Harris, keep in mind you're voting for J.D. Vance because he will well, be the president. He yeah, will I be the that. president ultimately. And you have to rethink what you're talking about. Your Lord and Savior may not make it. He's old and he may get pushed out because he's weak, too. So if you're voting Republican, you may very well be voting for J.D. Vance. And the only thing I would say to that is that I, I heard someone did a video on it or um, mm -hmm. a TikTok on it. And, but his point was that, well, MAGA will go down and then J.D. Vance will just slide in and do what the Heritage Foundation said. Right. Understand one thing about cults. If Trump goes down like he dies or they push him out, I'm sorry. They're not going to follow you, J.D. No. They won't. They are devoted to their God. And if you do something bad to their God, it would be on you. See, that's the thing. The Even if he passes away, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. See, I disagree on that point. If you push him out, then every mega cultist is going to go insane. You won't be able to get anything done because they will push them uh, with, with their who they are. And Trump will go down without a fight, even if he's psychotic. So the only problem, and I agree with that, he would have to drop dead. And then, and people would have to be in more, you know, in order for this to work. But in realistic but terms, fear, he's not going to win. No. Donald Trump's not going to win. No, J.D. Vance won't be the president. Donald Trump will go down in flames. J.D. Vance will run out his Senate term, and then he'll be out of politics, maybe out of business, because nobody likes the motherfucker. He's got yeah, an approval rating to, of 30%. Yeah, as we all talk this here, and I, and I do this, at the end of one of our videos, I tell everyone, it, it, um, don't panic because things are starting to turn the worm. Yeah. And when we started this conversation, you know, today um, in Georgia is a concern. OK, I'll be honest for you guys in bigger states like California or New York, where I'm at, we're a swing state. And so my right. vote has a uh, it's sad to say this fact, but my vote has a lot more weight to where you guys in those states. It shouldn't. Yeah. Until we get rid of the fucking electoral college, but it does. So right. what's going on in Georgia matters. We all know about the state election board, the three Trumpers, their rules. But all of a sudden, there's a pushback. Brian Kemp tried to get him removed, but he couldn't do it because the court says that, that he can't do it without an investigation of them. There are lawsuits already hitting the ground, not only from Democrats, but from Republicans and county bo election boards. Because it's not about the rules. It's just that the hand count, we do not have the money for the hand count. We cannot do this hand count. 
It's not going to work from us. You cannot put that rule on us. Maybe next four years you can, but not right now. There is a push going on here in Georgia to prevent that. Republicans are desperate um, here in Georgia. I don't give a shit what the polls say. There, are, There's a massive amount of Trump of um, blue support here. The ground game from Kamala Harris and Democrats is huge. Yeah. Also, dear God almighty, 14th district of um, Georgia, get rid of Marjorie Taylor Greene. Sean Harris is a former U.S. general, army general. Do you want the weather crazed woman, a woman who thinks that Democrats create the weather? I mean, what is wrong with you people? I know I've lived in this state long enough. I know the crazies, but I know the majority of us in Georgia, those who've been here a long time, and I haven't, but I, I, my perspective, you're not crazy. And yeah. you also know when someone's not helping you and she's only helping herself. How much longer do you want that person to suck off your life, suck your money away, take away your stuff to benefit herself? Because that's everything the Republican Party is. Every one of these crazies do not give a fuck about us. You can see that when Mike Johnson refuses to call any decent human being would say, okay, guys, we're in for a few days. We're going to um, do a quick bill. We're going to put some money in the kitty so people can help. But these people don't care. Well, it's they not even don't that they, care about you. It's not even that they don't care. It's their only strategy in elections. The reason Mike Johnson doesn't bring people in to vote for more money, because Donald Trump thinks that will make Biden look good. It's all about this gamesmanship, this political bullshit. And people are suffering. People are getting ill and people are dying because they are afraid that it's going to give Biden and Kamala an advantage. It makes Biden look good so that it makes Kamala look good. And it's all about their desperation to win the election. That's but, how you know who's winning this because yeah. of the who's desperate. Because the thing about it, how's that make it look good? It's an apolitical situation. I mean, be. Well, I mean, it should be. I mean, when Ron DeSantis doesn't pick up the fucking phone from the president or the vice president, because that's political, you people are sick. Well, what are you going to do when you're, Kamala you're is the president and you get a hurricane in Florida? You're not going to take the president's call when she's the president? I bet I mean, not. I mean, he's he's having a problem with accepting the money. He yeah. doesn't want to accept the money because he's afraid that's a political. Dude, I mean, yeah. that whole statement like we started earlier, they just give you an estimate and you flip out. What is what? Wh why, Ronnie? It, or, don't you care about your people? Well, and the, ridiculous, not. the ridiculous thing about this is the only fear he has is of Donald Trump. Here's a crazed, diminished, fucked up, weird individual. And he terrifies Ron DeSantis, uh, the senators, the members of the House. He terrifies oh, them and they just keep doing whatever he says. And he keeps fucking failing. Why would you continue to take directions from somebody who continually fails? I mean, I mean, the delusion of Donald Trump. I mean, I saw this come across, uh, come across and I'm going. Um, so Donald Trump has requested that he have military aircrafts um, support his of cover his airplane because he's afraid the Iranians are going to kill him. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I saw that and the Department of Defense said, yeah, no, you're a private citizen because he is so delusional. He thinks he means that much. But no, uh, uh, let me, let me offer something else on that too, oh, okay. because everybody thinks, well, he's scared. He's chicken. Think about this. How's his money situation going on? Pretty bad. Not pretty bad. Maybe he wants the government to fly him around for free because he doesn't have the money to pay for a fucking plane. Oh, well, that's 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 a you problem, brother. Yeah, that's a you problem. And the thing about it's like and, and I said, I, I mean, I did a video on it. I'm going, look. Um, you're not getting any military aircraft because you're not president. You're not going to drive. We're not going to protect Je Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein's aircraft for you yeah. because you don't. You're not a private citizen. 
you're not Air Force One. That belongs to Joe Biden. And Air Force Two belongs to Kamala Harris. Because believe it or not, guys, she's still the vice president of the United States. Right. So she gets that honor because that's she's a second in command of this country, whether you like it or not. And that's the thing that bugs the fuck out of me that say that she's not qualified. Are you out of your... F- I had... W- the primary thing keeps coming up again. Because I made... Uh, I don't know where this came from. I made a video about her qualifications. And all I got from all these fucking MAGA folks and fucks and some of the far left, well, she didn't win the primaries. Look, oh she was on the ticket with Biden. And so they elected the Biden-Harris ticket. Right. Biden stepped away. He had... Um, just for all those who are going to watch this and bitch, he put her up and then all the delegates that he had, he requested that they vote for her right. because he set them free. Right. They did a good job. The Harris and her people and the uh, Biden people knowing that chaos would be a bad thing to do within three days to get her enough delegates to secure the nomination. Yeah. You motherfuckers keep telling me she was not selected. She was never. I have one asshole go, well, she never was elected for anything. Okay. Well, let let's me, back up. Let, let, let me, let, let's talk about qualifications. We're going to take a break right after this. Okay. Uh, but let's talk about qualifications. Um, Kamala Harris um, was a lawyer. She was a, a prosecutor. She was an attorney general. She was a senator. She was a vice president. And now she's a presidential candidate. You want to say she's not qualified. Well, let's look at Donald Trump. What did Donald Trump do before he ran for president? He was a shitty TV game show host and he filed bankruptcy six times. So who's more qualified? Who's fucking more qualified? And they also they talk about she's never been elected. I have one guy so never been elected in California. And I go, oh, OK, let's back up. She was elected twice Alameda County District Attorney. Elected twice AG of California. I know I voted for one of them. And then she was elected to the U.S. Senate by Cal- the people of California. The only reason she didn't finish her um, term is that she became Vice President of the United States. Right. She served the people of, of California for decades. She served the people of the United States for the last two years. She was elected to those posts. And you people, again, you bring up the primary thing that she wasn't selected, that it was given to her. Fuck you. Here's the thing. I'm tired of that debate. The primary thing is a party thing. It's not a constitutional thing. Oh, God, yes. You could pull somebody out of a fucking crowd and run them for president. Any party can do whatever they want. And and let's let's be honest about Donald Trump. Throw away the, the qualifications. Let's talk about elections. He won the 2016 election because of our fucking fluke system at Electoral College. And he he lost, he lost, well, that too. He lost the popular vote by 3 million votes to Hillary Clinton. He hasn't won an election since. No, that wasn't even a win. That was a technicality. Let's be honest. If any other system, she would have been president of the United States. He loses the 2020 election by 8 million votes. And it's a good bet he's going to get a run on this one. The only reason we have these problems is because of our fucked up system that our forefathers put in to protect smaller states and also slavery, but that's a different cat right? on together. So that's Uh, what we're, that's the biggest thing we're fighting right now at this point. All right. Well, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Will is with us today. We've talked about a lot of stuff. And uh, what I wanted to bring up is the actual fitness of being president of the United States. And I love how Kamala Harris is constantly needling Donald Trump. When he said what he said in Detroit, she called him out on that. And she keeps calling him out. But she did something yesterday that she wasn't required to do, but she did it nonetheless. She released her health records. She and the doctor found her to be in perfect health, uh, mentally and physically. And uh, she maybe had some allergies and she was nearsighted. 
nothing unusual for a 59 year old woman. But the reason she did that is to put pressure on Donald Trump. Donald Trump needs to show us his fitness report, too. Now, he'll always say, well, I took the cognitive test and and uh, I'm fine. And, you know, you list off all these words. But the fact of the matter is that was in 2018. That was six years ago. He needs to take another one. We need to know about his physical situation, too. I mean, for God's sake, the guy got shot in the ear, for Christ's sake. We need to know his physical status to understand whether he's fit for being president. But I'll guarantee you this. He won't release shit. And she, well, pe- pe- I mean, people should think about that. There's been no medical records released after the um, attempted assassination. We don't know what happened. No, no one talks about it. I like to know. Maybe we'll find out later what was done to anybody, or someone may have had an accident. Not saying. Just yeah. I mean, why it's so silent? I don't know. Donald Trump physically has problems. Oh, we can see it. And we heard it the other day because he had another episode of flagellants. Flat, flagellants. Farted. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to say farted. Um, and then a lot of people said it wasn't even just that. It was um, an expulsion. That, that, uh, that's, that, that's what I was going to debate you on here because uh, I said this th- the other time when he people say he passed gas. And I said, uh, uh, I would debate you on that. You know, it's either a fart or a shart and given his age and given the fact that he wears diapers he doesn't wear that for looks no he has he has some issues with incontinence when it comes to fecal matter and and uh i listened to those i listened to those recordings and i I, it almost seemed like it was something that was created and added in because it sounded it sounded a little messy yeah i mean I would say that, but I, I got that from the Midas touch, and they're usually pretty straight up. And they, yeah. and Ben Masala has made a comedy because I'm not saying we could make fun of it because, but you have to ask yourself, they're getting reports from their people or people uh, or sending them information that he's seen a gas, he's seen a ga- an internal specialist, a gastro uh, pest specialist. That's problems. Yeah. Um, he's had that issue since the apprentice right um and he's physical when you could see his there was i saw a picture you know i was opened up a, a story on him and he had his picture on there and i'm going oh he looks bad he does look he looks rough. really old he looks really old time is not your friend especially the way he is and I will say this, who you are also affects your health. If you are a, 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 a person like Trump, it catches up to you faster. Well, here's the thing, yeah. too. You got a 78-year-old guy fly, uh, flying around the country, stopping here, stopping there, giving two-hour talks. That takes its toll on a guy 70. It takes its toll on me at 64. It would take its toll on a guy that's 40. He's yeah. 78 years old. And he's not healthy. I wouldn't be surprised. He'd be like a guy at the end of a marathon on November 5th and just fucking collapse in his own shit. Yeah, and the thing about it, though, is like the press isn't saying a goddamn thing about it. No. Um, they were, you know, I mean, they were all over President Biden when he came back from the one, you know, series of trips and he actually kind of was looking, he looked tired. Yeah, he was in 14 different time zones. Yeah. Um, but they don't give him that. They don't cut him that slack. But for Trump, they never bring it up. They had one story about a week ago in the New York Times, but I never seen it again. His cognitive dissonance, his his breakdown cognitively, and what he says and how he says it. Because again, I'm not the best speaker. I just get really excited, but I have a plan. I have a point A to point B. Right. I may do a little improvisational live, but I get to the end. I know where I'm going. He has nothing. No. He 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 is. And everything is just, it's all weird. And to watch his, the thing about it is, if you don't know what a cult is, yeah. I'll say this, Jim Jones has a cult, had a cult, but he was coherent. Yeah, he was coherent. Okay, coherent. Crazy, Donald, but coherent. Yeah, yeah, Donald Trump has a cult. They listen to his incoherency and consider that the best thing they've ever heard in their lives. 
Yeah. And that's fucking scary on many, many levels. Well, the thing about um, it is, is he, he came out at a recent speech um, and he said, he, he, you know, he, he gets in these situations where it's all emotion for him and he just says anything. It says fucking oh, anything. I, and he says, you're, 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 you're not going to have cows anymore. The fuck does that have to do with anything? Oh, I, I, I mean, it was, he, he's trying to, he's depicting an America doesn't exist. And that he only, and again, it's a fascist playbook. Only he can save us. Only he can make the sun bright again in this darkness, which isn't true. Um, and the mass media isn't helping him. And one thing I was just looking up and I remembered, um, there are two things that should be affecting Trump. One, the, the apprentice movie is there, but they barely got it released because Trump yeah. fought it and no one wanted to take it on because they're afraid of Donald Trump. Right. I don't know why, but okay. And then NBC or, uh, got a hold of, the separated documentary about mm -hmm. the uh, which is a a a, um, a a documentary made on the separation policy of Donald Trump um, during his presidency for immigration, where the kids went, mm -hmm. how they were taken away, the orphanages that were set up that they were sent to. They have that. That is important information for us to make a decision on an election. NBC and MSNBC don't want to run it till after the election because they're afraid of what Trump may say and may get upset. You know, there's going to be a, a collective sigh of relief after this election on November 5th because everybody's so terrified to do anything from Merrick Garland all the way down to the media. And it's going to be a big sigh of relief. And it's going to be a, a shitstorm of information that people have been sitting on. Yeah, but. It's but the point I think is I'll not, I'll take it back to the fifties, with um, God, who was the reporter that uh, uh, went after um, Joe? Um, God, I just drew a blank. The Red Scare, all that. Oh, Joe God. McCarthy. Joe McCarthy, and the reporter was, damn it, um, one of the big guys, Edward R. Murrow. Yeah. There we go, Murrow. Okay. Merle did a hardcore report, TV report on McCarthy, and they warned him, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because you don't know what the consequences were. And he did it. He knew what the consequences were. And the network did it. They didn't care. It was journalism. Right. And that was one of the things that brought Joe McCarthy down. Absolutely. Because they he showed him for the false asshole he was. Now we move forward all these years, all these, all these so-called journalists like Bob Woodward. Hey, motherfucker, you knew that information. You sat on it for a goddamn book. Yeah. You sat on the COVID information that, that should have been important to all of us. You sat on that information about him and Putin till you got this book out. You got to be fucking kidding me. You who brought Watergate to the forefront yeah. and you did that. Now, NBC has a legitimate piece of journalistic work that is pertinent to the other candidate and you don't want to do it because you're afraid he might get mad i swear to i swear if it was kamala harris or like what they did to hillary clinton and her emails they would have been on that and white on rice yeah that's that why i think ridiculous that's why i think that after this is all said and down there's said and done, there's got to be a lot of questions asked to the media because the media, whether it be the left side or the right side media, has ac absolutely done a disservice to this country and also put this country at risk. And if that's the case, nobody should be watching these motherfuckers. It, it's time to, we're going to, it. once this goes the way we're going to go, and I'm going to say this to everybody, we talk about these concerns, so we're aware of it, but we just do our business Everything is going to be okay because the trends show that Congress will still blue. I don't buy that the Senate is going to go um, to the to the to the Republicans. It just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't smell right. Um, and the House they keep saying, well, maybe no, they're going to they're going to the Republicans are going to get rolled in the House. But 
I was, and I talked to you about this earlier, um, and I'll bring it up here. Michael Steele, who is a republic, who was the former national Republican National Convention chairman, right? Till he got run out. She I wonder why, maybe because he was black. Yeah, okay. That being said, um, it still supports his party. And him, Mitt Romney, G.W. Bush, they they asked Mitt Romney, why don't you support Kamala Harris? Why you say you're gonna vote? Why don't you put it all the way out there instead of saying, I'm not voting for Trump? Because he says, I want to rebuild the Republican Party. <laughs> okay. Let's start there. So Michael Steele was on his sh uh, weekend show with Politics Girl. If anyone's seen Politics Girl, we all know that she's a smart cookie. Um, yes. But he was talking to her about the Republicans are going to rebuild their party on principle and ethics once they got rid of Trump. So I'm going to say, and if we're going to do, we're going to, um, they're going to do what uh, to the Republican Party kind of shifted away from what the Whigs did. Whigs and Whigs, you know, disappeared and they became the Republican Party. Let's be clear. The Republican Party has not had principle and ethics for 50 years. At least. At least. When Lyndon Johnson did um, uh, his movements and basically for civil rights, he knew what he was doing. Democrats were the Dixiecrats. Yes, Democrats in the, were the majority in the South. Yes, they were Jim Crow. Lyndon Johnson forced that out of the Democratic Party. Right. It was brutal. It was nasty. People left the party like Strom Thurmond, fine you, fuck you, you know, all those people. And they turned either independent or they turned to the Republican Party. And the Republican Party, instead of saying, yeah, we stand with you, embraced the racism and Jim Crow of the South, knowing it was a power play. <clears throat> Always remember this. The first campaign stop of Ronald Reagan, and I think Nixon too, was in a sunset town in fucking Mississippi. Right. Remember that. Remember the George original George Bush, Willie Horton <clears throat> ads. Right. Remember this. The Republican Party has been run on two things for the last 50 years. Shitty economic principles and racism and hate. In discussion. And you want to say they're going to go back to their principles and ethics? Michael, you're a smart man. But you're fucking stupid with that. You <laughs> fooled yourself. The Republican Party never was that. You were part of this. After they got their ass kicked with Romney, they were going to say, hey, we're going to kind of change and get and move and include everyone. Yeah, but you didn't. Why? Because you can't do that. You have put the Republican Party has been based on that since Johnson purged the Dixiecrats. Right. Right. And that's how you change a party. The Democrats had to change the entire their entire a modus operandi and how they look at things. The Republicans have not, and they still would not. There is no salvaging the Republican Party until they give that up and give up their stupid economic principles of trickle-down theory. Um, Other than that, any Republican that tells you that they're a good Republican is a fucking liar because there's no such thing as one. Let me just say this, Mitt Romney not acknowledging Kamala Harris because he wants to rebuild the Republican Party. Motherfucker, you're going to be 78 years old. Why don't you go take a nap, take some uh, take some Metamucil, and go to bed? Your fucking career is done. You, the Repu the last thing the Republican Party needs with all the millennials and Gen Zs taking over is another old fucking white man. Hopefully, they will learn a lesson. I doubt they will, but nope. they don't have the they don't have the substance to attract young people. I'm polling even shows that 70 percent of the people and that vote for Democrats. And that goes back to the polls. Let's come back to the polls that have Democrats running around screaming their heads off. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. There was one creator, good sized creator on TikTok said, stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Because look, I'll bring it up about the polls because I want to make you aware that these people are full of shit. And all we have to do is keep doing what we're doing. Um, 
are we should we worry about election interference? Yeah, but we got people working on it. Like I said before, Georgia, they're working hard on that. Even the Republican governor knows that's fucked up. Well, and, and they're and trying the thing, to fix it. And the thing about it is, is yeah, there'll be some election interference because that's just who they are. But they did the same thing in 2020. Donald Trump mm -hmm. was president and they fucking failed. I'll tell you this. People come to me all the time and say, how do you feel so certain that uh, the Democrats are going to win, that, that Donald Trump's going to lose? How do you? There's a million reasons why I would say that facts and data that state mm -hmm. that show that. But you know what the biggest reason why I know Donald Trump is going to lose? Because Donald Trump admits he's going to lose. He's already talking about how the 2024 election is rigged. And right. the Republicans are already got tons and tons of lawsuits about the 24 right. election before it even happened. These motherfuckers know they're going to lose. That's how and, I know they're going to lose. And that's down party because they're in panic mode across yeah. every state. Yeah. Um, also, here's, here's where it's going to really... Where, Trump is really going to blow himself up. I told you about his speech in California and Coachella. Yeah, that's going to work well. He's going to New York. Yeah, that's going to work well. Yeah, go ahead, dude. It, it, you know, believe yourself that you can read those windows two states. He, the report out of Coachella, a lot of the Republicans in that area saying, yeah, we're going to turn the state blue. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but here's the thing. And I saw this pop up. Donald Trump is going to have a town hall on Tuesday that is taped by Fox News of women only. It's a ladies' night Tuesday with Donald Trump town hall to talk about women's issues. <laughs> okay. Let's all get to put this in thing. And I, I did a video on this and it had a whole bunch of views because I think I hit a, a mark. Let's 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 all get together and think about this. An adjudicated rapist is going to have a town hall talking about women's issues. Okay. And here's the thing that's even better. It's not going to be live. They're going to tape it and then show it the next day on Fox on Wednesday. Yeah. After they sane wash it. And I don't think there's going to be enough Clorox to wash that bitch, but go ahead. Well, I tell you what, you, what, you talked about the, him speaking in Coachella last night. And there was a little... Actually, tonight. He's there right now. No, it's last night because this is airing Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry. Last night. Sorry. Hi, bye. Back again. Stay with me Keep here. Going. Stay um, with you. Go ahead. But, but uh, there was a little minor incident there. And you're talking about women's rights. Inter interesting how Donald Trump handled this. Um, there was apparently... He was talking. And there was a woman behind him that heckled him. A woman, a younger woman, heckled him. And then she was being escorted out, presumably by security. Donald Trump noticed this, and this is what he says. He says, back home to mommy. She goes back home to mommy. Was that you, darling? And then she gets the hell knocked out of her. Her mom is a big fan of ours, her mom and father. So he's espousing this young woman get her to get the hell kicked out of her because she had the audacity to call him out for some bullshit that he's saying. Yeah, he's big on women's rights. He's big on getting this woman get the hell knocked out of her because she had the audacity to contradict him. And that tells you exactly the difference from Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Yeah, We've seen Kamala Harris handle hecklers. She gives them some leeway. And then she goes, no, I'm talking. Does she threaten them? No. She just say, hey, I'm talking to you. I'm talking. Give me my time. I've seen her do it. Also, she's scarier than Donald Trump, period. Let's be yeah. honest. She goes, um, she goes in a mom. The first time she did it, the best thing was to watch people of color, myself, a lot of black creators, go that and went. And like one guy said, I was like watching my mama and I shut up. Yeah, I'm just watching the video. And I shut up because that's a human being. And what we're dealing with is beyond a caricature of a man at this point. Um, and he's hanging on by dear life because that's all he's got. He's got nothing. He really well, doesn't. He just constantly, he constantly says uh, uh, stupid things. He says stupid things. Uh, he was in another another uh, talk where he was talking about Kamala Harris. And he continues to insist 
that she's not very smart, which we've already debunked. But but he he did something that if I said it in that context, my wife would kick my ass because she's a former teacher. And she she said that um, Vice President Kamala Harris is retarded. The R word. That's what he said. I There's two words I don't say around anybody. That's the R word. And that's the uh, uh, um, C word. You don't you don't fucking say I say a lot of shit, but I won't say those words. But then he went on to said he also railed against Jewish voters supporting her amid the White House uh, race, saying that they're they're out of their minds if they vote for Kamala Harris. He continues to alienate people every time he opens his fucking mouth. And it's and the hardest thing is like we still need we still see the supporters yeah. and they're loud and they're really sad to watch and they the only thing they got is they keep thinking they're going to get one over on us i mean they he gives you nothing other than um your hate fix i mean yeah. that's it, it literally trump it, you know, if you everyone's ever read 1984 you have the two minute of hate which you put up the enemy and everyone screams and yells at the screams at the screen for Trump supporters, it's been eight years of this. Um, the rest of us who have to sit next to you are kind of tired of your shit. Yeah. We really had it. Um, and so that's why he, Donald Trump says, I would watch out if you're wearing Kamala Harris um, um, gear out there uh, so something might happen to you. And uh, my response and a lot of people's response is, Sure, bring it on, bitch. Yeah. Because you don't get it. The thing about the these MAGA supporters don't get it and the far right, they all think we're a bunch of wussies. Because they've been convinced that liberals are just teetotaling wusses who believe in hugging trees and stuff. Let me make this clear, okay? I've never been a liberal in my life, I've always been a moderate. I never bought into the far left bullshit because I think that's dreamland. Yeah. You do not run the world without business. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. I believe capitalism as as way that Tom Harris finally someone put it in the correct words. A fair system, an opportunity economy that runs on capitalism that's fairly regulated and gives you an opportunity to make something out of yourself, but without abandoning people that fall behind. That's the way the system works. That's not socialism. That's a good hybrid of capitalism. Well, here's the and thing. That, you know, people always say, well, if you give back to the middle class, it's socialism. Let's talk about capitalism. Every year we pay taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And if I'm in business or if I'm in shopping and retail, if I give something, I should get something back. Not according mm -hmm. to the Republicans. I pay taxes, but I shouldn't get anything because we can't afford it. That isn't right. capitalism. That's fucking autocracy. That is a right. dictatorship. But <clears throat> Donald Trump is is imploding in spite of what the media says. In that mm -hmm. place where he called Kamala the bad name, he also admonished his billionaire supporters, his donors. He basically said to them, you're not working hard enough. And the reason he said that is because Kamala raised a billion dollars in 80 days and he raised about a third. So he's pissed that he hasn't raised as much money as Kamala and he's going after the people that support him and admonishing them. That's fucking crazy. Donald, you sh he should know. Really rich people are fucking cheap <laughs> and, they and they're not going to invest. Look. A rich person does not get rich if they don't know what to invest in. Yeah. Look at Mark Cuban. Well, hell, look at well, Warren Buffett. They they do their they do their job. Now, a lot of those people that are his friends are generational war wealth. They haven't fucking created anything in their fucking lives ever. Yeah. They're just sitting on their interests and using that because they want to feel. Basically, they're like the French aristocrats before the revolution. They got all this money. They don't want to do it. So what do you do? You fuck with people. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. And that's, that's the only thing. But 
also, they eat their own. And dude, they really don't like you. Let's be honest. They don't like you. No, you they give don't them, like you. They, I mean, you give them some help. You, 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 they smile at you. But they hate your fucking ass. They hate you. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Donald Trump is only loved by Donald Trump and the really extreme cult. And I don't even think that Donald Trump loves himself anymore. I think it's his he reaching a desperation point for people to say, love me. Please love me. Someone uh, tell me everything's okay. And I don't even think he's trying to win. I think he's just trying to keep his head above water and survive. I, I just, I think he's terrified right now. Yeah, because that's the thing. I think what's scaring everyone right now, it, it's, well, scaring. Yeah, I'll just word scaring. Des when someone's desperate, okay, when someone's at their last legs, um, they just don't care anymore. No. Uh, they, they don't. And he's getting desperate. Um, that's the one thing um, people don't understand, that how revolutions happen, like the Russian Revolution or the French Revolution. When you take everyone's hope and it gets to the point that dying is better than living in the system, that's where revolutions start, deadly, bloody revolutions. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get that way with Trump, but what you're seeing right now is going back to the one person who lived desperation for a very long time, who was getting fed information by people too afraid to tell him the truth. And where do we get the word bunker mentality from? Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to say it since we're on YouTube, so they'll let us use the word. <laughs> Adolf Hitler in the bunker. Because when he was there, there were just reports his generals didn't want to tell him what really was going on. They were lying. They were giving him, tell him that he was moving units that didn't work. He was, and they were just got him in the shell. That one viral scene they always use of him yelling and screaming is when they finally told him the truth. The Russians were in Berlin. Right, you're fucked, dude. That's when he, that's when reality came in. And that's where we're getting with Donald Trump right now. We see all this this craziness, but he's in bunker mentality. No one's telling him the truth. No, they're not. They keep telling him it's okay. She's an idiot. They they don't have the money. The polls are right up with you, boss. Everything's fine. No, you can win California. You can win win New York. Everyone loves you. But right now, those people around him, they know the truth. The ones, not the, the hardcore middle. They'll never, um, the ones on the outside know the truth. They know the truth. Yeah. But they keep hanging on. The Republican Party, outside of the hardcore, know the truth. They're hoping, they're hoping it gets hope that people will, will still vote for him, <laughs> vote for Republicans, because that's all they do. I don't know you're going to get that this time, but he's, I don't think that's working because when you have every fucking congressman in Florida voting against FEMA, the, the relief in the last budget, where one of them, like Psycho Luna, is saying that they're not doing anything, but you're the first one handing, putting your hand out for your district. Right. I don't think people are, are done. Are, I think people are getting done with this. Yeah. And we're going to find out. I mean, I am, I'm hoping that the gerrymandering isn't so bad that we keep that bullshit up. But I got a feeling that even in those districts, they're just tired of the crazy. Um, and this, because it's just not working. I mean, I think that's something people have to consider. Even the Republicans have got to be tired of this constant chaos, this constant fighting, this constant craziness. You know, people who support Marjorie Taylor Greene or Lauren Boebert or any of these fucks, they've got to be almost embarrassed because they keep getting exposed for the stupid shit they say. Uh, there's got to be a certain amount of uh, exhaustion by people who have tried to support these people and get nowhere by doing it. And you look at some of this. Let's talk about the Senate candidates real quick. That guy in Pennsylvania, the Oriental, the Asian guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. That man is crazy. He's, he's insane. Yeah. He, he's a nut. In Michigan, um, Elaine Slotkin's um, opponent, dude, no, 
you you already said you support a national abortion ban on a uh, national abortion ban. Shut up. You keep trying to to sane watch it and say, no, no, that's not me. No, we, we, we caught you. We know what you're lying. We know what Arizona was, is Carrie Lake's yeah. out of her goddamn mind. But hey, you know, hopefully, you know, you do you. Um, California, that's going to be Adam Kissinger because Steve Garvey, dude, yeah, you were a great baseball Adam player. Schiff. Politician. A- Adam, Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff. Um, Schiff. I'm wrong, wrong Adam. Um, Adam Schiff. He's that's never going to happen, and the only reason they have a Republican running because they have to. Well, the re-election was when Schiff beat um, Katie. Steve, I watched. I election. watched some of those debates, and Steve Garvey might have been a great baseball player, a Hall of Fame baseball player, but in politics, on the stage in the debate, he's out of his league. Yeah. He's well, not let me let me tell game. you a true story about St- Steve Garvey. He was not the nicest guy ever. Steve Garvey did cheat on his wife. Steve Garvey, and this is the truth, I remember this as a Dodger fan, Steve Garvey had an affair with uh, the pitcher Don Sutton's wife (laughs) that actually blew up into a fight in the clubhouse. And that one game, he came out with a black eye, Garvey did. And no one said anything about it, because in those days, the reporters were, we don't talk about that. But that's why one of the reasons too he got traded to San Diego or didn't want it because he was not the man everyone said he was. He was not. Well, um, I guess no one's surprised that he's a piece of shit after yeah. now supporting Donald Trump. I mean, but see, it, that's that's going nowhere because we know California is safe. Yeah. Um, in Florida, it's Rick Scott, but I I don't know how a man who is literally a fraud who fraud who stole billions of dollars from us with Medicare got elected Senate Senate. Cause that worries me. Fl- Florida. Oh my God. What is wrong with you people? I don't get you people. Well, then you have I Scott, don't get what, Scott Perry in Pennsylvania who was part of the fucking insurrection. Yeah. And he, I mean, that's, and um, he's got to go. That's the thing. They're there. All these MAGA people, these insane. Oh, and John Tester. People are worried about Tester losing. I don't seat. think I'm worried about him. Uh, I, I did you see the debate with him and the other guy? Yeah, it wasn't even close. I mean, let's. I'm a big fan of the show Yellowstone. Okay, yeah. it's a fictional thing about Montana, but that guy running against John Tester was every freaking villain that they had in Montana uh, in Yellowstone trying to take away land to build rich man's plague playgrounds at the expense of the of everyone else right i mean he's exactly that he doesn't even live in the fucking state he's he not from, a huge ranch he's not from montana people. no he isn't he's from minnesota he's from i think yeah he's, he's he's i think he's another fucking tech bro and he's like i mean i listen to him and then he's spouting maga shit and john tester that's the thing about montana i've been in montana it's a beautiful state it's a hardcore place. Yeah. I could not live there, but it's a beautiful state. Those people are hardcore. I find it hard to believe that Montanans will be sucked in by someone like that. John Tester is one of your fucking own. He has no fingers. Why? Because he lost them when he, in an accident while working in his farm for his family farm. The man is also fucking smart. Yeah. Listen to him speak. He's good. I mean, how, I mean, and they say he's, no, I find it. If you vote for him, Montanans, you are no better than an Ohioans who voted for J.D. Vance. You aren't. No. You're no better because he's no better than J.D. Vance. He's an empty shell of a man representing a state that literally, literally it, it, it is represents what the Western mentality of America is that's Montana and I don't get it. Yeah. Um, um, who Tim she, he is, he was born in Minneapolis where I was born. Um, he was born in Minneapolis. Uh, he was a Navy seal. Apparently he was an aerial oh, fighter. No way. That's no what way. Uh, he was an aerial firefighter. 
And apparently he's a businessman now, and he founded a company called Bridger Aerospace, headquartered in Belgrade, Montana. So he's living in Montana now. It provides aerial firefighting services in 24 states and two Canadian provinces. So he made a lot of money doing this aerial firefighting, but he's not a Montanan. He's from Minneapolis. And I got to tell you, dare you to come fucking back because we don't like you. I mean, I, and again, he, I listened to the, I listened to some of the debate. He is just, he gives you, he reminded me of the debate, um, year, um, back in 20, was it 20, uh, 2020, 2020 between Reverend, uh, Reverend Warnock and Kefi, Kelly Loeffler. Right. Loeffler, who was a sitting senator at the time. So, Warnock was hitting out of the park. He was talking about the people, about Georgia, and all Kelly Loeffler was talking about is just unbelievable, mega stupid points, liberal this, liberal that. It had nothing to, to do with being a, uh, helping us in Georgia. Nothing. It was all standard Republican MAGA bullshit. Yeah. I remember that debate distinctly because he looked like a man who cared about everyone. Well, he's a reverend, but he also looks very intelligent in what he's going to do for us. Kelly Loeffler looked like a wind-up doll. Yeah. And I well, watched that debate with Tester. Tester was laying his plans out. He sounded intelligent. This guy looked like he was looking for the script lines. To well, as, I, as I've said before, uh, based on history with Donald Trump's endorsees, who are all crazy trump fucks, they never win. They never win. And that's why I can't imagine how Tester doesn't beat Sheehy because he's he's a carpetbagger. He's uh, um, he's not a Montanan. Uh, he's a Trump uh through and through. People see and, through that. People see and another that. one in Ohio, Bernie Moreno. Right. That's There's another a, fucking carpetbagger. Total hardcore anti um, anti women's rights MAGA uh, idiot who was in Springfield uh, touting the immigrant thing in Springfield. Right. And I don't know how that race is going, but if Ohio wants another idiot for a Senate, good luck. Enjoy that. Cause I don't get you people. They're not going to work for you. They never do. What is JD Vance has, you know, of all the votes, I think JD Vance has missed about 90% of votes in the Senate since right. he's been in the Senate. He's never there. He doesn't do his job. I mean, isn't he there to represent you? Just asking. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, and then let's talk about Texas. Let me just they say poured, one thing about Bernie yeah. Moreno. Yeah, go ahead. It's ironic that he'd be a Republican because you know where he was born? No. Bogota, Colombia. He wasn't born in the United States. He could never be president because he wasn't born in the United States. Um, He's, he's not going to be immigrants. Yeah. He's one of them. They're immigrants. Uh, God, any ship in a storm sometimes for these guys, I guess. Yeah. Um, it, and, and it's like, so that's another uh, Minnesota or is it Tommy, Tammy Baldwin is Illinois, Wisconsin, I think Wisconsin. Um, she's in a close race with another idiot. Isn't she another carpet bagger in uh, Wisconsin? Yeah. Let me just check here. Um, I mean, I think this is something we should all look at, everyone, guys, because this is, this is important. If we don't win the Senate, that's going to be two years of hell for everyone. We do have a race in uh, in Minnesota. Is that a race? I thought that was going to be a, a, a slam dunk. <laughs> it's going to be a slam dunk. Uh, it's it's Amy Klobuchar, who's not going to lose. Um, and she's going up against somebody named Royce White. Now, Royce White is an African-American kid. Uh, he's not a kid anymore. He's he's a man. But he was a basketball player. Oh, yes. And he was a pretty pretty talented basketball player. Then I think he went to Duke. And then, he, then, 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 then this alpha male got some kind of crazy fear of flying. And his grandfather was going to drive him around. I'm not faulting the guy for having mental issues. But. That should be acknowledged when he's running for a Senate seat. But he's also he's also a Trumplefuck. 
in spite of the fact that he's African American. He was asked one time, you said one time that uh, that women talk too much. He said, yeah, I said that. That's true. They talk too much. This is the kind of guy he's going to put up against Amy Klobuchar. You haven't seen much, much uh, um, uh, campaigning for Amy Klobuchar because she doesn't fucking need to. She's going to whoop his ass. Yeah, it's not even funny. Um, Royce White is the uh, Herschel Walker of this exactly. Senate election. Exactly. Is what you got there. Um, and then, yeah, see, what's the one? Nevada. Um, I don't. I think the Democrat's going to hold that seat. Uh, the, the Nevada. From the last time I heard. Yeah, I, uh, I can't remember who it is, but yeah, I think Nevada's okay. Uh, I know that uh, Old Soul will have some input on that when we talk to yeah. him. And then Maryland is turning blue, whether they like it or not. The For the former governor, who is not a total idiot, but he is getting caught in the backlash. Yeah. From my understanding, he's, he's, he's um, underwater there. The two that will concern all of us uh, well, especially in Texas, um, the Democratic Party has pumped in $25 million to Colin Allred. Right. Um, they want, I don't even know they want Texas. They just want Ted Cruz. Right. I want Ted Cruz. Yeah. I want Ted Cruz to go away. Yeah. Um, how that how that man survives elections with his stupidity, fuck it, amazes me. I mean, how in God's name do you keep electing a man who literally turned his back on his state when they needed him the most? Right. Explain that one to me, Texas, because I don't get it. Because that man is everyone hates him. There's no one. They don't even like him in Texas in the state house. The and best, that's full of two greatest assholes in the world. That the best line uh, I ever heard about Ted Cruz was from my former senator, Al Franken. He says, you know, I think that I like Ted Cruz better than anybody else in the Senate, and I fucking hate Ted Cruz. So, <laughs> it's just, Al Franken got done dirty. He should have never left. He did. He should, that, was, that was a dumb... Compared to everything else we see now, he should have never... That and was who, just... And who's to blame? Wrong. Who's to blame? Not the Republicans. Fucking yeah, Democrats. Democrats. Yeah, they were. They, they ate their own. And, and in the sense that it was minor and it could have gone around it. I mean, we're not talking about Bob Menendez. No, we're not talking that nightmare. No. Um, or what's going on in New York. That was minor. Um, he was a good senator. It was it was sad for you guys. I mean, but so the, the reason that everyone should look at this because this is important. If you can contribute to some of these campaigns, I would agree. Because, again, the one thing about keeping the Senate is you know that all the cabinet positions, the ambassador positions, all that come through the Senate. And right now, uh, four, almost four years at the end of George Joe Biden's um, term, a lot of his ambassadorships have never been approved by the Senate. Um, they won't do it. I mean, that's right now. And even with a split Senate, they won't do it because they keep right. holding it up. And if we don't have a Senate majority, we're going to go through the same thing again. Yeah. It's going to be it'll be just really rough. Um, that's the hardest. That's one thing I worry about. I know the press likes it because they like the drama. Yeah. But uh, and the Republicans see the thing about it is if we get them a foothold. It, it's like when you you know take a whole bunch of antibiotics, but you don't do your last dose. That disease comes back. Yeah. And those people, a lot of those guys in the Senate, um, even if Trump loses, they will they may think they can come they they would replace Trump, but if Trump's still around, they may bend the knee again. And that's a scary, scary idea to give them any kind of base again. And that's something that's why it's important to keep an eye out on that. It's um, it's pretty scary. We're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the Rational Boomer podcast first. Uh, I want to encourage people to check out uh, Will on TikTok and YouTube, right? Yeah, well, kind of YouTube. That's still kind of a, a budding thing. Uh, Binder 38 US. Um, YouTube is what it is. TikTok, I'm close to 1,300 followers. Um, it's it's a slow crawl. I don't, I mean, it's fun. I get a lot of, uh, you know, it's almost like a small community. And, yeah. well, and you know it's. I never, I never get too excited about 
You know, people say, well, I got this many followers or that many followers. And I'm lucky I have a lot of followers, but I've mm -hmm. been doing this for four years. So it's been a pretty steady climb. But whether you have a thousand followers or a million followers, it really doesn't matter. You're speaking nope. to people who want to hear you. You have a responsibility to give them the truth. Yep. And it's just as important as as anybody with I mean, big numbers. But when you, you know, I mean, because I'm I do this, I think, sometimes um, for for my own sake to vent because I, do, I see I do stuff too. because I see stuff I'm going are you out of your minds and and when I say stuff it, it's I try to think of it as this is what I think this is what I think is going to help you guys because this because you need to kind of because you read some of the stories you have to kind of glean through stuff and it gets a little weird and also I think you and I have a perspective from our generations yeah, that a lot of people don't. Um, the younger folk, I mean, hey, I power to you because you you've lived a different life than we have. Um, but when I see, it's, I just I don't care about the followers. It's cute, it's right. fun, um, but I don't mind going on there three times a day and go, hey, I look at this, look at this bullshit, everybody. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Look at this bullshit. Well, I think, what do you I think, think? <laughs> I think, so, I think somebody like you or somebody like me or some of the other people out here, we kind of have a responsibility, a responsibility that I didn't know I had until I started doing this because I, and I'm sure you get this too. A lot of people come to my page and say, that's exactly what I was thinking, but I can't say it either because of where I work or because of my family or because I don't have the platform. So if somebody does have a platform, regardless of how big it is, we have a responsibility to put that information out for all those people that don't feel comfortable doing it themselves. I mean, when you get a note once I had, was it a person from Vermont said, thank you because I was concerned about this. You know, thank you for a little sanity on it. I'm going, okay, that's a win. Yeah. Because it gives they because, it's easy to panic. The, the, it's a, uh, it's a fire hose of bullshit that, that they hit us with. And honestly, let's, let's, let's be honest for a moment for everyone, all the bullshit. The majority of us really live in fear of another Trump presidency and a Christian nationalist country. It's a possibility. It's a big fear. It's a scary one because everything that we live for have done can come back will disappear in a moment for a few people it'll be chaos it'll be a lot of things and it's a fearful time it, it, i'll be honest it's even more fearful to a point than the pandemic because at least you know you were fighting a virus yeah and you know how to handle the virus and you can get a shot for the virus right now we're fighting something that's been metastasizing for the last 10 years and basically, it's this huge tumor on the United States, and we're trying to get rid of it, and it's hard. It's a huge um, tumor with shitty pants is what it, it is. Exactly. And the thing about it is not just it's not just the tumor. It's basically you have to get to the root. you right. got to pull the whole thing out. And that's the hardest part for it. And, it's going, and the thing about it, they are going to fight us to the bitter end. Understand after the election, it ain't over. It's going to be a bitter fight to January 20th, yeah. January 6th. Um, we all have to be prepared for it. What we cannot be is, is fucking afraid. You can use your fear for your action, but you cannot let fear hold you down. That's one of the um, things that frustrates me about people when they call me, I'm afraid. I'm so afraid. I hope you're right. I hate that phrase. I hope you're right. Listen, we're in a fight. And if you're in a fight and if you don't think you're going to win, then you better go stand on the wall because you're not helping me. You better be in this for the fight or go sit down and wait till it's over. And then you can feel better. But and you don't go into anything thinking, well, I might lose. No, fuck you. We're going no. to win. I have no question in my mind. Uh, we are stronger. We are better. And they are weak. We're going to fucking win. And, and, and you guys, everyone out there, if you hear this, and I know a lot of people do listen to it when I put it out and, they, and I get the comments, it's okay to be afraid. What's not okay is to is to be in fear and be a deer and wait for the, the, the truck to run you over. 
You have to respond. I've seen, this is going to be a really bad um, thing to say, but there's a squirrel down the road from us. This squirrel is the smartest squirrel I ever saw in my life because he saw us coming down. And instead of running across the road, he hit the middle of the road. He went back because he was smart enough to know he wasn't going to make it to the other side, but he can go back and start again. Right. Right. Okay. So the point is, is that we cannot stand in the middle of the road and go, do I go this way or that way? You go where it's safe. And then you come back because where we're going to be safe is all know that what we're hearing from the Republican side, we know is crap. We know that these people at a core are kind of evil and only looking out for themselves. But the majority of us are what Kamala Harris and Tim Wall see every day. We're looking out for our neighbors. We're there for everyone. Those people that are complaining about everything you see in the federal government, will not lift a hand to help you anyway. They don't care. But you will. I know anyone that listens to me or you know we would be out there helping you if that was the area. Well, and, and, and the that's thing, what you got to keep in your mind. The thing to remember, too, is if you're afraid, you just gave the Republicans a win because that's what they're trying to do mm-hmm. to you. They're trying to make you afraid. Do not give them that win. Kick, kick them in the teeth. Do whatever you got to do. And that's why I do what I do and you do what you do. And when it's all said and done on November 5th, you'll see we're right. And then I'm going to start laughing at motherfuckers. Right. I mean, or, you know, as um, Tom Cruise said, sometimes you just say, what the fuck? Yeah. Let's just do it. Because that's the thing. I mean, last night, the other night, the Dodgers won the uh, – got into the L, uh, NLCS. They had their backs against the wall. That yeah. team was whooping their ass by the bats. But everyone kind of girded up, and they they took a team that was been batting like 300 and shut them down for 26 innings yeah. and won. We're kind of in that why We have been getting beaten around for the last fucking 10 years. But you know what? They're starting to whiff. We're starting <laughs> to shut them out. Yeah. And I think when it comes down to it, guys – if we do not lose faith, we're going to win it. And I don't think a lot of people are losing faith. No. And a lot of people have stepped up. That wouldn't be for four. Or as a, a Michelle, Michelle Obama said, don't boo, do something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Will, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it immensely. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, uh, I, f- I feel like uh, I feel like uh, a psychiatrist sometimes. I'm I'm getting a lot of it's very cathartic for you. We're getting this stuff off your chest. You're getting to spew it out to the people. I know I get that feeling when I, when I come out here and do right. it. So, so you're welcome. I appreciate <laughs> you. And you're cheaper. I'm um, cheaper, than yeah. my, my, my therapist. And also again, binder 38 us on TikTok, on YouTube. Let's try to dump some more stuff there. But um, if you're looking for some kind of semblance of crazy, come check me out. Cause crazy is cool. I'm crazy, down with it. Crazy is cool. All right. For those of you listening, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to do that. I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you tomorrow. And tomorrow I'll be back in fucking Savannah. I'll explain that whole story. I just got back from Savannah. I'm going back. Uh, I'm there as we speak and as you're listening. So the next show will be from Savannah and we'll deal with the problems with the different (laughs) equipment and all that shit. But have yourself a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.